Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Main to Main Coverage podcast. And today we have a very special episode as at the time of recording this, that being March 14th on a Sunday this afternoon, legendary NFL player quarterback Drew Brees announced his retirement from the NFL. So today we're going to be talking um, a lot about his career and just what what's the Saints future um there's a lot to discuss with this but Mason um who's joined me as always what are your thoughts on this move and kind of your emotions going through it um I kind of saw this coming just because after that Buccaneers playoff game he kind of like almost said a farewell to the stadium and it was kind of like oh this is really it but emotionally it sucks because he was one of the quarterbacks like I grew up watching that I knew as a legend and him, Aaron Rodgers, Peyton Manning, and Brady were, like, some of the main guys that every time you watched them play, it's just greatness. Like, they rarely had off games. And Breeze, he he was one of the most efficient quarterbacks of all time. I mean, this dude threw 74% completion percentage last season, which is ridiculous. Um, he also had a record. I can't remember the exact number, but he had a record for most uh, touchdown passes, like, consecutively. Uh in a game, so he threw, like, a, at least one touchdown pass for, like, 30 games or something. He, so he put up mind-boggling stats. Um, it, it kind of, It's kind of weird, though, because he's had such this legendary career, but when you look back on it, he only has one Super Bowl and zero MVPs, and it's like, was he robbed a couple of times? I probably think he could have won a couple MVPs, maybe another ring it. Um, and, like, honestly, the emotions really hit me about Drew Brees retiring and during that playoff game just because, like, it sucks to see some like a legend like that go out like that because you know Peyton Manning ended up on top. Tom Brady, we don't know where he's going to end, but he has seven rings, so he's going to end up on top too. And to see Drew Brees kind of go down like that kind of hurt. Um, but what he did for not only like the team, like but the community for New Orleans, I feel like they're always going to remember him just because like he did so much for them uh, during Hurricane Katrina and other like big disasters that they had. And I think he's always going to be a legend and. A lot of people's hearts including mine yeah so that was a uh, very well said mason so the news uh, i was sitting you know with my family in my living room and i'm scrolling through my phone and i see drew Brees' instagram and the way he announced it was like he wrote a caption but he had a video of his kids and i just thought okay maybe this is like some donation thing because breeze was someone who just gave back a lot which i'll touch on here in a second but i read it i'm like oh he retired and when i checked the video he posted it just like 43 seconds ago so <laughs> i kind of saw the announcement kind of when it first happened if you will and i was like oh that's sad and then the saints posted something that got me choked up it was about how like breeze just led them through these tough times and i think you look at drew breeze he has a lot of memorable moments uh, he has only one super bowl win but i think it's a top tier super bowl that saints colts Super Bowl and Drew Brees played very well in that game. It was not like he was lousy in it or like he was carried. No, he went out there and he played very well against Peyton Manning, which I think is cool because Brees would go on to break some of Manning's records. But I mean, this was overall, you know, just a really great game. You know, Brees was 32 out of 39 for two touchdowns. That's a great performance. And for me, it's better to be one and oh than like one and one. So I would like to see him in maybe one or two more Super Bowls, but the one he had was, I think, a very underrated game. We saw him play like himself. Um, you also had that one season where he was like voted the number one player in the NFL, and that was a great year because I think he broke the passing yards record against Washington. I remember that like everyone went crazy, and like that's when he hug hugged his kids on midfield that was just a very memorable moment um i don't know if you remember that mason that was like two years ago um yeah. on, on monday night yeah I think and then I remember that yeah uh saints just completely destroyed washington <laughs> <laughs> uh so that was a nice moment and then uh he broke uh the passing uh career touchdown records against the colts two years ago on monday night football so even though he doesn't have the MVP, I think he still has a lot of memorable moments. Um, like you said, growing up, he was one of the legendary quarterbacks. Uh, you know, I didn't seriously stop watching football until 2014, 
But even when I was a kid, Drew Brees was one of those names. I'm like, wow, you know, he's up there. And I think that he has some of the best short and medium accuracy ever. Um, deep ball, eh, but his short and medium accuracy were some of the best ever, just how proficient it was, how he's able to just get the ball there. And, um, you know, he's just had a fantastic career. I thought this was the right time. He had a great season. He got to play against Patrick Mahomes, Tom Brady three times, Aaron Rodgers, um, Justin Herbert, Matthew Stafford, a lot of great quarterbacks. So it was overall a neat season. And then you also look at Drew Brees and that his teams don't really didn't really have that many great talents. You look at people like Eli Manning, Tom Brady, Peyton, Aaron Rodgers, Big Ben. They had great talent. Breeze, yeah, he's had some nice people like Alvin Kamara, Michael Thomas, Cameron Jordan. But for the most part, Breeze was the man who made the Saints relevant. And I think we have, have to talk about what he did off the field, helping the city of New Orleans rebuild from Hurricane Katrina and just how positive uh, Drew Breeze has been for that city. So definitely, I think, going to be a New Orleans uh, sports legend for a while. Yeah, touching back on what you said about, like, Talent wise, like the Saints really didn't start becoming a, a powerhouse name until later in his career. Like Michael Thomas and Alvin Kamara only like were a part of his uh, career for a couple of years. But there was a good uh, time period where they were like, I think it was during 2015 to 2017, I believe. They were like seven and nine, three years in a row. Mm-hmm. And the Saints just like really couldn't build around him. I remember during that uh, stretch, their main problem was defense. They always had a horrible mm-hmm. defense. And I honestly didn't even really think about this, but when you, like, look back at his whole career, um, he had LT for a little bit with the Chargers, but if we're talking more about the New Orleans standpoint, he really just had Marquise Colston for a good bit, and then he had Jimmy Graham for a bit, but he never had, like, multiple pieces until his later career when it was kind of, like, too late because he wasn't in his prime, sort of, uh, sort of say. And I feel like that's, like, it's, like, a kind of, like, a disservice because he did so much for that team, and it kind of sucks that, like, they couldn't build – better teams for him because I would love to see a Drew Brees, uh, Aaron Rodgers, NFC championship matchup more, a Drew Brees, Tom Brady, Super Bowl when uh, Tom Brady was on the Patriots, just like stuff like that. I feel like we never really got to see. Um, Also touching back on that Colts game last year, I remember watching that game and that was one of, if not the most efficient quarterback play I've ever seen in a game of football. He was 29 of 30, I believe. And I remember this because I was rooting for Drew Brees that game to get the record. I remember, I think uh, it was like a drop by Alvin Kamara out of the backfield. I'm like, oh my gosh, he just ruined his perfect game. But it was <laughs> but Drew Brees didn't even care because he's just like that team player. And I remember, I think he threw a touchdown pass. Then they called it a flag. Everyone's oh tired. yeah. And then the next play, he threw the touchdown and he actually got it. And like just seeing that moment, because like. Like, it was just, like, a lot of uh, emotions running through the stadium, too. That was just, like, a really cool game to see. And I'm really glad he broke it. But then Tom Brady took it back, and then Drew Brees took it back. And then this is really weird. But overall, just great performance and great career for Drew Brees. Yeah. Um, I think another thing I want to touch on, Paul, is look at Drew Brees. He had some fantastic seasons, 2012, uh, 2018, 2017. But a lot of those seasons ended in heartbreak. You look at that 2012 with the catch two with the Niners Saints, like where Alex Smith, I think it was Colin Kaepernick, like just threw a dart to like Vernon Davis to beat the Saints. And then he had the whole no PI call for the Saints Rams championship game. So, you know, it is, there's been a lot of stuff against Drew Brees, but I think the fact that he's kept his head up high really shows the fact of how great he is. I just love how much of a family man he is. There's that iconic photo. One of my favorites of uh, Drew holding his son um, after the Saints beat the Colts in that uh, Super Bowl game. And just the fact that he loved the family, loved the community. You know, he was a true saint on and off the field, which I think really sums it up well. So um, quickly, talking about the Saints' future, um, they have like no cap money at all. So <laughs> um, I think the Saints just kind of need to rebuild. Um, I think they could trade away some of their players away. Michael Thomas, um, I don't know uh, about him. He's someone I think could go to a team like Baltimore or Green Bay, who's more championship ready. Um, even Cameron Jordan. Jordan's been a high level edge rusher, one of the more underrated players, but you could trade him away. I think the Saints window has closed. Taysom Hill, I like 
He's a very gimmicky player, though, so he'll probably have some games where he's efficient and nice, others where he turns the ball over. So maybe go with Jameis Winston. I just think the Saints window is closed, and for like maybe two, three years, it's going to be like a five, six win team and try to retool. I don't know if you saw this, Tanner, but actually today, uh, Taysom Mill signed an extension. It was four years, $140 million, which is <laughs> ridiculous. Um, the good thing about the deal, though, is it's voidable. So say the Saints are like, man, we don't really want Taysom Mill. They can cut him, <laughs> and, and they will uh, they don't have to pay him a dime. Like, nothing is guaranteed. Um, but I thought that was interesting. They're willing to give him over $30 million a year to be a gadget guy because a report came out, I think it was by Schefter or Rappaport, saying Jameis Winston is expected to be the starter for the Saints. So it's like – you're paying $30 million for a backup tight end, and then you're having Jameis Winston start. It's like, I, I don't know what the Saints are really doing right now. I feel like they're kind of – they really don't know what to do because they have had Drew Brees for 15 years, so they really haven't had to worry about a quarterback for 15 years, which is insane. Um, and they're they're having to cut a lot of players. They're having to restructure a lot of contracts. So I, the Saints' future, they have so much talent, but there's so many holes on this team. I feel like – this year, they're going to run with uh, their main core, like Michael Thomas, Cameron Jordan, and Al Kamara. But then after they see it really doesn't work, I feel like they're going to start selling some of those players to teams that need those players, like a Ravens, like you said, that need a number one receiver or something like that. But the Saints' future is definitely an interesting one. Um, they have a lot of talent. I feel like if they wanted to, they could definitely trade a lot of that talent and just, like, rebuild for the future. So I don't think they're in a total dilemma especially since I don't think they want to win now with Jameis Winston. Maybe they want to try to tank for a quarterback. It, it really depends on what the front office wants to do with that, with this core. Yeah, it's uh, going to be interesting to see for the Saints where they go. I think this NFC South gets a lot more interesting. Panthers on the uprise. Um, what happens with Tampa Bay, Tom Brady resigning? Do they run it back? Um, I think it'll go like nine and seven, ten and six. I don't see them winning a Super Bowl again or appearing again. We never know with Brady. And then I think the other question is where what other retirements happen? So far, we've had Thomas Davis, Greg Olson, the Pouncey Twins, Phil Rivers, Drew Brees. Um, I would say most of those are Hall of Fame year one locks. Probably Brees, Rivers, Olson, Pouncey Twins were great. Are they Hall of Fame worthy? I don't know. Does Larry hang uh, retire? Does Julio Jones hang it up? Uh, I think Matt Ryan said he's coming back. Big Ben said he's retiring. But it's just crazy that a lot of these quarterbacks, this pocket passer era, the Brady, Rodgers, man, just all these names are retiring. Really the only ones left are Brady, Rodgers, Big Ben, and we're seeing this new era with Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, Kyle Murray, Russell Wilson uh, come in. So overall... That's kind of my thoughts. You know, it was, you know, it's it's sad, but, you know, Breeze is a family man, so I'm happy to see him spend time with his kids. And I think his kids are young, and I think this is a good spot for him. So he's like, yes, the kids are young, so that way he can grow up with them and see, you know, their milestones in life. So overall, Drew Breeze, congrats on an incredible career. That's all I have to say, Mason, if you have anything else to say. Uh, one thing I got to say is uh, congrats on a – Legendary 20-year career. Kind of wish Drew Brees played a little bit more with LaDainian Tomlinson. That might be the biggest what-if ever. But um, other than that, uh, fantastic career. He has the records to prove he's a first ballot Hall of Famer, top quarterback all time, Super Bowl MVP. I mean, and not even only that, but I'm, he won the Walter Payton Man of the Year. I mean, this guy has just, like, done so much for his team and his community. And, like, it's, it's one of the perfect ways to go out because he really is a family man. And I think he really just wants to set, uh, settle down and just be with his family, which I think is really awesome. And um, congrats. Yep, good way to say it. And that'll be it for this episode. So until then, we'll see you all next time.